To hell with you, Dan Crenshaw. To hell with you, Bill Kristol. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, William Lease, your number one stop for data, journalism, data, storytelling, sports betting, and more. And today we are going to talk about boom, boom, boom. The drumbeat of war is starting to beat. Now, I've said this on this channel before, but my number one political issue, although right now it's censorship, but number two, which was number one for me for a long time and is still very important to me, is Never-ending wars overseas. I hate the fact that we waste so much money and lives on pointless wars on the other side of the world that do not matter to the United States and really have no bearing on the lives of Americans. We, I believe that our wars in Iraq and Afghanistan were the biggest waste of time, money, and lives in U.S. history, the biggest foreign policy blunder of all time. And it's like we haven't learned our lesson because the drumbeats of war are starting to beat again when it comes to Ukraine. And it's looking more and more like a pointless war on the other side of the world that wastes more money is going to be inevitable. And it really makes me mad. Now, for those of you who don't understand the main reason we waste so much money and lives on wars is because there's a lot of people who make money off war, specifically defense contractors and politicians that are owned by the defense contractors. They need war because it is part of their revenue streams. And so, therefore, the more wars we can start overseas, the better. And it really makes me mad because a lot of these neocons and politicians and talking heads and think tanks and defense contractors that push for these wars are doing it so they can make money. That's what it's all about. They'll try to justify it by saying it's about human rights or protecting the United States. Like my favorite stupid excuse is, we need to fight them over there so we don't fight them over here. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, especially with Ukraine. But they use all these stupid justifications to justify war for profit. That's what it's all about. And you have the likes of Bill Kristol and all these neocon hacks, Jonah Goldberg. They love nothing more than seeing flag drape caskets come back to the United States into Delaware with dead soldiers inside those coffins. They love that. They get off to that. That's what they love because they know that they are going to be making money because that's what they need to make money. Dead Americans. A lot of these stupid neocons would love, love nothing more than to send the sons and daughters of the working class over to the Middle East or to Ukraine to die so their friends and the politically connected can make more money on war, the defense contractors. I hate Boeing. I hate Raytheon. I hate Northup Grumman. I hate Lockheed. I hate Halliburton. I hate all these defense contractors. I hate them. And our military leadership is a joke. It's a total joke. Our military leadership, they're all talking about how we need to purge white rage and everything like that from the military. But who statistically, when it comes to demographics, is most likely to die in these wars so these defense contractors in the military industrial complex can make more money? Statistically, which demographic of men out there are most likely to die in these pointless, pointless wars so that politicians, the politically connected, and all these Washington, D.C., defense think tanks and all that can make money. Who? It's white men. So they love to trash, like the likes of Millie and Austin, love to trash all these people in the military for white rage, yet they need them to die for their pointless wars, their pointless, stupid wars. I don't see why. But Anyway, the point of this video isn't to rag on the military industrial complex and defense contractors and all the bad players out there that make money off these wars. The real reason of this video is to talk about why Ukraine? Why do we need to fight in Ukraine? Because it's funny, you have these Biden administration hacks and these military mouthpieces going on the news saying we need to 
fight for Ukraine because borders need to be respected. All the while, while we're actually being invaded on the southern border right now, the United States, no one says anything about protecting that, that border. No one says anything about the sovereignty of that border. No, we need to take American lives and resources and money to the other side of the world to go defend the border of a country on the other side of the world that does not pertain to us. But I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. That's not the reason we're going to Ukraine. The real reason we're going to Ukraine, the real reason why they need a war over there is because Ukraine is the epicenter of money laundering, fraud, and corruption. It is a money laundering center using the foreign aid scam. Why do you think politicians in Washington are so protective of foreign aid? Well, you have to understand how the foreign aid scam works. Now, the Washington sends out taxpayer money we don't even have because last time I checked, we're running a deficit. We're running a massive deficit. We are in trillions of dollars of debt, yet we send all of this foreign aid to every country in the world, it seems. Why? Why is that? Why are we sending money we don't have to all these different countries? Because it is used for money laundering and kickbacks. Here's how the scam works. United States politician says, hey, country, let's use a random one for example. Hey, Mozambique, we'll send you $5 billion in aid. And then therefore, once you get that $5 billion, why don't you kick back some of that to us? Hey, we got you the $5 billion, you know, you grease our palms a little bit, kick it back to us. That's how the foreign aid scam works. They send money out of the U.S. taxpayer dollar trough to these countries, and they kick a percentage of it back. It is money laundering. It is a scam. Money laundering using foreign aid is an excuse, and they all justify it by saying, oh, well, it's, uh, it's helping out the disadvantaged around the world. That is a load of crap. That is a load of crap. It is given to governments of other countries and then laundered and kicked back. Foreign aid is all a massive money laundering scheme, and there is no country out there where this is more apparent than Ukraine. Ukraine loves this foreign aid from the United States because Ukraine uses it to influence and buy politicians around the world, especially in the United States. It is the epicenter. And remember, Donald Trump looked into this in 2019, if, it, no, if anybody remembers, and he got impeached over it because he got too close. Ukraine is a money laundering foreign aid scheme kickback hub epicenter, and they need that to keep going. They don't want anything to interfere with that. Russia knows this. Russia knows that is a that Ukraine is an epicenter for fraud and corruption and schemes and kickbacks. They know that, which is why they know they have the U.S. by the balls here. That's the real reason they need war in Ukraine, because they don't want all this dirty laundry being aired. They need the money laundering and schemes and kickbacks to continue, because a lot of people in the United States and around the world get rich off the money laundering that happens in Ukraine. That's how it works. Foreign aid gets sent, foreign aid gets kicked back. A lot of people need that and rely on that as an income stream, as a revenue stream. Can't have anything interfering with that, especially the Bidens, especially Hunter Biden, especially Joe Biden. They've gotten rich off the money laundering in Ukraine for a very long time. A lot of politicians need this to stay on the down low. They can't let any of this be exposed. And they are willing to send American troops to go die in Ukraine to protect the money laundering. That's, that's the real reason the drumbeats of war are starting to get louder and louder in Ukraine. Two reasons. One, to protect the money laundering and kickback schemes that occur in Ukraine and all the fraud and corruption that goes on there. And two, there's a lot of military industrial complex, defense contractors, politicians, think tanks, all that who get rich off war. But I will say this, I guarantee you that there is no 
no legitimate reason for the United States to get involved in Ukraine at all. So I'll tell you this, if you think we should be involved in Ukraine, why don't you go sign up? Why don't you go volunteer? Or why don't you go volunteer your sons and daughters to go die on behalf of Ukraine and die on behalf of the military and industrial complex and die on behalf of the money laundering that goes on there, because I can assure you there is no legitimate U.S. interest at all for us to be there. And that is why I oppose any effort to go to war in Ukraine. Opposing pointless, unnecessary wars is one of my top political issues, and I will use this channel to speak out against the waste. But what am I going to do? Nothing. It's still going to happen, and we're going to see Americans die in the Ukraine for absolutely no reason at all. And the last thing I'm going to say is that going to war is usually a last-ditch effort by politicians to try to uh, turn around their sinking ship of an administration, turn around their approval numbers, and let's face it, Joe Biden badly needs it. But the question is, is he willing to risk American lives to help try to salvage his failing administration? I don't know. But anyway, I massively oppose these stupid wars and to hell with all you defense contractors and military industrial complex, to hell with all you neocons, to hell with all you politicians pounding the drum beats of war, to hell with you Dan Crenshaw, to hell with you Bill Kristol, and all you pathetic neocons, Jonah Goldberg, all you. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Ukraine. Until next time, this is William Lease.